Good evening, Booktube. This is Johnny. I thought I'd make a video. It's a Monday night. It's 9.59 at night. It is April the 8th. I'm down the lower level. I was going to go to bed, but I thought I'd show you. I wasn't going to put these books away. The story goes, today I, I left the house around 11 o'clock late. Monday morning to do errands, put gas in my car, get my glasses adjusted. And uh, then I stopped at Blue, Blue Stockings Bookshop since I was out. And I found some books. <laughs> and one of the books I found, I'm not going to show you all of them. Well, I might. I suppose I will. I won't show you the ones I got at Goodwill. Uh, yeah, I'll just show you the ones from the Blue Stockings bookshop. They sell used books. And I have in-store credit. One of the things I found, which was really interesting, is that I showed you a couple of weeks ago. I, w I went to the Finville Warehouse bookstore used bookstore in Finville. I've shown you, I made a video of that bookstore in my YouTube channel. But I, I bought there a couple of weeks ago this feminist, early feminist literature, Herland, a lost feminist utopian novel by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, author of The Yellow Wallpapers. And this was also has an introduction by Anne J. Lan, Lane. And I was at the books, the Blue Stockings bookshop, and I found this biography of To Her Land and Beyond, The Life and Work of Charlotte Perkins Gilman by Anne J. Lane. So I didn't know when I got this that there was a biography of Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Uh, it says here in the back here of her land, on the eve of the First World War, three American male explorers stumble into an all-male, <laughs> all-female society somewhere in the distant reaches of the earth. Unable to believe their eyes, they promptly set out to find some men convinced that since this is a civilized country, there must be men. So begins this sparkling utopian novel, a romp through the whole world of masculine and feminine as on target today as when it was written 65 years ago. And this came out in 1979. And it was first published, oh, it doesn't say here. I can't, it doesn't say it when it was first published, but it was at least in the early 20th century. I don't know why it doesn't have it in here. So I found her biography, which was really, and it only cost me, I had in-store credit, so I didn't have to, I think I, it was $3. <laughs> So I was really pleased. So now I, I like when I find a novel or something, I like to have the a biography of the writer. And she not only wrote biographies, she wrote uh, all kinds of stuff. I mean, I was looking at the introduction and she wrote prolifically. And she was known, and it says here, the astonishing success of Charlotte Parkins Gilman's novel, Herland, over 50 years after it was written, made its author famous. But not for the first time. At the turn of the century, she was one of America's most celebrated women writers. In 1924, Rebecca West called her the greatest woman in the world today. H.G. Wells and George Bernard Shaw eagerly sought to meet her. Her many pioneering books and lectures on feminism and socialism 
Most notably, her bestseller, Women and Economics, made her virtually a household name. So however, so, however did the scandal which surrounded her. And it goes on. So I was really pleased to find that. I like, I like, I primarily collect biographies. And I like biographies on the writers that I collect. And I was pleased to find this biography to her land and beyond the life and work of Charlotte Parkins Gilman by A.J. Lane. So I found that. And then I found a Penguin edition of a novel called J by James Welch, Fool's Crow. I already had this in this edition. This is a Penguin book edition. But, uh, let's see, it's called. I collect the writings of James Welch. And, um,. Back here is a little blurb by Wallace Steiner. Quote, a novel that in the sweep and inevitable of its events in the human persuasiveness and variety of its character and the scrupulous authenticity of its culture reconstruction in the sheer flow and strength of its prose is a major contribution to Native American literature. And, the, and then it has her little description of the novel. In the year 1870, located in the lo, located in the Two Medicine Territory of northwestern Montana, is the camp of the Lone Eaters, a small band of Blackfeet Indians. Their life consists of timeless round of activity, deeply rooted in the land and the seasons, and the reverence for the customs handed down from the long ago people. But over increasing presence of the Napakawans, white men threatens this existence. Foot Crow, a young warrior and a medicine man of great vision, has seen the future. He knows his tribe must either fight a brave but futile war or surrender their lands and their way of life. So, yeah, so. I bought this nice edition, and I'll send this one, I think, to my son, Josiah, out in Washington. And then I found uh, at Blue Stockings a memoir by John Waters, uh, Role Models, and uh, John Waters. This says here in the back by Tom Carson, the New York Times Book Review, John Waters Accoloids won't need reviewers say so to lap up every word of role models. But dilettantes at liberty to skip around will find a lot to charm them. In a way, the best joke in the book is that bladder meanhoff gang, outsider, porn and all, Waters can easily revealing on every other page that he is both sentimental and a good hearted, past the relish, Uncle John. <laughs> so I don't know. I I collect the writings of John Waters. He's a like a a film. He's a filmmaker. Uh, he's very. It's kind of offbeat. And I have two other books by John Waters, Mister Know It All, The Tarnished Wisdom of a Fifth Elder, by John Waters. So, you know, as I told you, I collect things by people, and I saw this John Waters at Blue Stockings, and I already had Mr. Know-It-All, and I also had Car Sick, John Waters, Hitchhikes Across America. Uh, end of 70, 70 West, Car Sick. He also wrote uh, Crackpot, Shock Bayou, other things. So I'm always looking for John Waters. Another thing I found was a writings of Edmund White, Inside a Pearl, My Years in Paris, a memoir. And I thought what I was going to show you in this video very quickly is my Edmund White collection so I can put them away before I go to bed. 
I have Edmund White, our man, our young man, uh, New York City in the 80s as its decadent heart is guy, top male model, darling of the Fire Islands gay community, like a modern day Delor Delorean Gray. He seems untouchable by time, decades past, fashion, fashion change, yet his beauty remains as transcendent and memorizing as ever. This is by Edmund White. And then I have Nectarines for the King of Naples by Edmund, Edmund White. And then I have Edmund White, the Fleur, Scroll Through the Paradoxes of Paris. Uh, Edmund White is from New York, but he also lived in Paris a number of years. He also wrote this biography on the French writer Jean Jeanette by Edmund White, a biography. And he wrote uh, Edmund White, City Boy, My Life in New York during the 1960s and 70s, another memoir. He wrote A Boy's Own Story, Edmund White. This is a novel. Uh, then he wrote Skinned Alive, Stories by Ed Edmund White. Our Paris Sketches from Memory by Edmund White and Herbert Sorin. He lived in Paris, and he, he, he writes about Paris and New York. He also wrote a novel, Hotel de Dream, a New York novel by Edmund White. And then you have My Lives, an autobiography by Edmund White. Then uh, another novel, a, a Beautiful Room is Empty by Edmund White. I don't have everything by Edmund White, so I collect him. This is historical fiction, Fanny by Edmund White. I read this a couple of years ago. And then lastly, I have by Edmund White, Farewell, Symphony, a novel by Edmund White. So this is my Edmund White collection. I collect him. I don't buy them new if I see them in a thrift store or a used bookstore, I buy them because uh, I find him interesting. <laughs> He's probably considered, well, you know, I don't like putting a writer in a certain category, but he's probably considered a gay writer. But I don't know. To me, he's just a writer. <laughs> and uh, I'm not really that interested in his homosexuality. But I just got into collecting his writings. Allen Ginsberg, I collect, you know, he's considered a homosexual gay writer. I like uh, Gore Vidal was a gay writer, but he would not be called it, just a writer. Why can't you just not put those labels on somebody? He's a writer. <laughs> and uh, so those are the things that I, I just thought I'd show you my Edmund White collection. Uh, James Welch. Fool, Fool's Crow. I really recommend his books. I I read a couple of years ago. I read his novel. Uh, oh, I don't don't see it here. The oh, I don't. It's not listed here. But anyway, I really lo look his writings. And uh, John Waters' Role Models. It's a memoir. So that will go with my John Waters collection. So, you know, I collect things. I was really pleased to find this today. Uh, Heartland, I found this a couple weeks ago. A Lost Feminist Utopian Novel by Charlotte Parkins Gilman. Introduction by Jane L. Lane. And I found that she wrote a biography. The Herland and Beyond, The Life and Work of Charlotte Parkins Gilman. So I was really pleased to find that. I might as well just show you what else I found today since I'm sitting here and it's right in front of me. I found this biography at Goodwill. This is an artist, Gal Gamanti, a biography by James Lord. 
He was uh, born in a Swiss village in 1908. Uh, he, he knew Samuel Beckett, Sartre, Picasso. Uh, con he, he was an artist. I don't really, this is the first time I can recognize his name, but he wrote, you know, he was an artist and uh, I just like reading about artists, especially around the, the turn of the 20th century, French, and I was really find it. So I found that. And what else did I find? Other things I think I found was I already had it. <laughs> and I put those in the car. There were doubles. So I found today I bought James Welch, The Fool's Gro Crow, Edmund White, Inside a Pearl, My Years in Paris by Edmund White, John Waters, Role Models, a memoir. And I found Gurmati, Ger I can't pronounce that, a biography by James Lord. That's what I found. I thought I had more, but I don't seem to see any more. Oh, yeah, and I found this biography, Her Land and Beyond, a life and work of Charlotte Parkins Gilman, a biography by Ann J. Lane. So that's all I really found today. I found two other books, but they were all doubles, and I put them in the car. Tonight, I have been reading The City Poet, A Life and Times of Frank O'Hare by Brad Cooch and reading The, the Last Ambine Guard, The Making of the New York School of Poets by David Lehman. So that's what I'm reading tonight. I found this and I was going through my books. This is The Net. Hand off reader. He was a writer for the Village Voice, and I found I was going through my books, and I came across this. He wrote for the New York, not the New Yorker. He wrote for the Village Voice. He also wrote for the Atlantic Monthly, the New Yorker, the Village Voice, the Wall Street Journal, the Jazz Times, among other countless pop, pop publications. But in reading about the Village Voice, his name comes up, and that's why I got it out. So it's, a, it's the, the Net Hend Off Reader. So that's it. I will sign off. I hope you're all doing well. This is, what's today? It's a Monday Reads. Showing you my Edmund White collection. Showing you my James Welch book, Crows. Fool's Crow, uh, John Waters, uh, The Life and Work of Charlotte Parkins Gilman, To Her Land and Beyond, Her Land, this Lost Feminist Utopian Novel by Charlotte Perkins Coleman. So I'll sign off, and uh, tomorrow will be a Tuesday. So hope you're all doing well. Thank you for the comments, new subscribers, and until next time, bye.